Okay, uh, today, the past few days, I've been craving Japanese food a lot, and I uh, really want to make this pork dish that I had at a beef bowl place in Japan. It's called shogiyaki, and it's got ginger and pork and like onions, and you eat it with the, over rice, and it's really good. So that's kind of what it looks like. I'm gonna see if I can find stuff to make this, and if I can't find that, I'm gonna try to also make either make gyudon, which is the, a beef version, it doesn't have ginger in it, it's beef cooked in dashi, with onions, and you eat it over rice, and it's delicious. But it's simple and easy, and I think it'll be good. So I'm gonna go to the store and see what I can find. <laughs> Shake it some more. <laughs> gyudon, gyudon. So it's, so it's gyudon? No, not, what? What are, we, what are we making again, and why? We're making a gyudon, Japanese beef bowl. Cause I had it in Japan like almost every other day I was there. Cause it's affordable and it's filling and it's pretty tasty. And it's easy to make apparently. So we're gonna go try to make that or we're also gonna try to make something called shogiyaki, which I had at a beef bowl place when I got tired of beef bowl, which is a, uh, Ginger pork. It's pork cooked with ginger and this is weird. <laughs> garlic, garlic and uh, stuff like that. Green onions. Like a savory soy sauce type sauce on it with ginger. It's really good. Yoshinoya? And... Yoshinoya, Matsuya, and then there's another one. Can't remember the name. That's all over Japan. Yoshinoya is the most popular one. It's like a lunch counter place, right? Yeah, and they give you a, you get like a, you either get a bowl with, but they cook this meat that's really thinly sliced in dashi, which is a Japanese stock with soy sauce and other stuff added to it. It's like super thin sliced meat and onions, and then they put that over rice, and you get like a salad with it and miso soup with it normally. It's like a plate set, and it costs like under $5, and it's delicious. So that's what we're going to try to make. So we're going to the grocery store that might have dashi. If they don't, I'll make it without dashi too. And they might have the meat that I'm looking for because you have to get really thin meat and that's hard to find in most grocery stores in the US. Unless it's like meat for... But yeah, what I was saying about the meat. Uh, the meat, it's hard to find that meat. You can find it at Asian grocery stores usually if you have, if you have one near you, which if you do, consider yourself lucky because most people don't. We have some, but they're like 30, 40 minutes away. So I don't really want to do that go all the way there just for some meat. I can make something else like it without having to do that. You can also do it yourself, but it's harder to do, and I guess I can show you how to do that. How to make this thinly cut meat yourself. What you were talking about? You have to like freeze it for a couple hours, like a chunk of meat, and then slice it with a really sharp knife. Okay. And it's, uh, it's hard to do, so that's why I haven't ever really done it. But I'm also gonna try a substitute, I think, using ground ground meat instead because everyone has ground meat and I think that'll taste it'll have the same it'll have the same exact texture but it'll have the same flavor so I think that'll be pretty good and it's cheaper actually ground meat's usually the cheapest thing you can get so and yeah, we're pulling up to the the nice grocery store that usually has everything we ever want okay what are we doing now all right, we got 90% of the, 95% of the ingredients I needed in this grocery store. I came here because I thought they would have dashi and they had literally everything else but dashi. I could, they had the stuff I could make my own dashi with it, but I don't know if they gave me enough bonito to put in it. And bonito is expensive, so I didn't buy it because you know, I mean, most people aren't gonna have access to that. So I'm gonna go try another grocery store and see if they have dashi. And if they don't, we're just going to make it without it. Because I've made this before without it, and it's just as good. So, what is dashi? Dashi is a Japanese stock that's made from uh, kombu seaweed that's like simmered with, uh, uh, what's it called? Katsu bashi? I don't know. Well, I don't remember the name of what they're called. No, bonito flakes is normally what it is. It's kombu and bonito. Together. It's bonito, or you can do, uh, there's other fish that they use as well, I think. But it's normally... Benito flakes, which is a smoked uh, fish. It's like a type of little tuna, but they dry, smoke, and they shave it right. in little shavings. And it has like a really, where do I go, right here? Go left. Intense, like, uh, 
smoky taste, kind of like bacon. I guess you could kind of probably do it with bacon if you were good, if you were good about it. But dashi is a Japanese stock that if you tasted Japanese food, sauces, or other, other things that any of your Japanese restaurants, even in miso soup at Japanese restaurants, they usually use th that kind of dashi. So we're going to try to find it. All right, quit recording me. This is weird. OK. All right. I decided to try this international grocery store by us that we live, that I live by. Never been here before, but they have a lot of crap. It's basically like the other grocery store we used to go to, the other Asian store, but like this one has even more, I think. They have dashi. This is what I was looking for. Han dashi. This is the brand. It's really good. Got this because I wanted to try it. Two times spicy Korean ramen. Usually you have to buy a whole packet of this crap in these kind of stores. I get to buy five of them, and I'm going to buy five of them if I don't like it, because it's going to be really hot. Tonkatsu ramen bowl, because tonkatsu is awesome. I might make a video on how to make that sometime. And this place, they have their credit minimum, your debit minimum is $10, so I had to buy Mountain Dew to get to $10. So they definitely, so definitely we need to come back to this store. They have all kinds of stuff, like tons of vegetables. I only went down two out of like of the like twelve aisles. I walked down two, two of them. Oh, wow. There's a lot of stuff. So, all right, but I think we're good. Mean? We're good now. This is uh, all the ingredients we're gonna need for this bowl today for this gildon. Got the beef, of course, which on the East Coast I've seen this at some places. I guess because we're close to Philly cheesesteak land. They have this thinly sliced beef. Will work pretty well in this. It's not the best beef, but it, it's really thin and most. Beef bowl places don't even really use nice meat. They use really cheap stuff. So this works. And green onions. An onion gets simmered with that. Dashi powder. I bought way more dashi than I needed. Along with soy sauce, sake, and mirin. And a, maybe a little bit of sugar, which is what that is. And then I have, of course, the rice. This is a short, medium grain rice. Normally it's called sushi rice in the US. This is a decent one. And usually there's pickled ginger put on the bowl at Yoshinoi in most of these beef bowl places. It's, you know, sour, gingery taste. It kind of offsets this because this is kind of sweet. All this is pretty sweet. And it goes really well. All right, I'm making Japanese style rice. As you can see, it's like really small grains. Medium grain rice is what it is, so it's very starchy. So you need to wash it first a few times to get it to clear. And you need to use cold water, not hot water. This is pretty cold. This, this is a rice cooker bowl. I just put it directly in here. Fill the bowl up with some water. You see it looks normal now, but see look at the water, you can kind of see through it still. Watch this. See how milky looking I got? You see that? Can't even see my fingers. Right. So you do that, you kind of take it, you can hear me rubbing here. I don't know if you can hear that but I'm slightly rubbing it, not super hard, because you rub it too hard, you break the grains. And what we're trying to do is get off the excess starch so the rice won't stick to itself when you cook it. And it, it's better this way, it's a lot better this way. So, this is specifically for medium grain, like, rices. Sushi rices. Yeah. Okay. Well, just Japanese style rice, you always do this. See how, see how much starchy starch that is coming off? We're gonna drain as much as we can to where I don't get any to come out. Fill it up with more water. You do this a couple times until the water is pretty clear. You don't see, it's still kind of milky. There's still some excess starch on this rice. We're essentially kind of polishing it, I guess. I don't, and now I do this with regular rice, but not. I don't massage it. This gets this gets the excess stuff off a little better. It makes the rice, when you, if you see Japanese rice, like good Japanese rice, it kind of looks like it's shiny kind of, mm -hmm. and somewhat translucent. That's because they did this, and it's this type of rice. If you don't do this, your rice will be kind of cloudy, and like, not as good. It still tastes good, but it'll stick together. See, this is pretty, it's getting not as cloudy now. You can see my fingers through it. It's, if you keep doing this, more starch will just keep coming off but basically when I get it to this point, I drain this and then I'm good. You can keep going, but it's not gonna get that much clear, clearer. 
we'll do it one more time, why not? Okay. See, it's pretty clear now, see that? It's more clear than last time. And we're good. You can do this with a strainer. It's a lot, little easier with a rice, but like a small strainer that the rice can't fall through, but we don't have one. So I just do it inside the bowl. The rice cooker. We just broke ours. Yeah, the handle, the, the handle broke. So that's pretty much it. Then you just fill it up. We're gonna make it like the rice cooker. Normally after you do this, you let it sit. If you're gonna make it on the stove top, you let this sit, you add the water amount you're supposed to, and you let it sit for about 30 minutes or more. So we're gonna use the rice cooker. The rice cooker has something built into it already to do the soak. But, well, I was trying to put my phone where you couldn't see it. No, you can see the phone. That's well, I didn't want people, to, I didn't want her to see the recipe. I was basically- Oh no, put it on there. That way, that way people know what you're supposed to be doing. Well, I'm using as the specific website. That's fine. I don't want them to know what website I'm using. Okay, well, let's, hold on. What? Get in the room, Tom. Huh? All right, go. All right, all right. I'm gonna start cutting up the onions and uh, for my gyudon, I need a, one onion. I'm gonna double the recipes I'm just finding for the amount of I like onions. So just cut it in half, cut the ends off, and then peel off the first papery like layers. If you don't, if you don't know. And then you just thinly slice it. So, well, still some paper on here. I'm just cut all this stuff out. It's me goofing around. Okay, and then just thinly slice it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, and I'm gonna hold my knife properly. I don't care. I haven't. I'm not here to be safety marshal Dan. Who's Dan? That guy. I don't know. Your knife needs to be sharp. It, it does, but knife's pretty dull. This cutting board isn't the best for this. It moves and crap, even though it has grippy stuff on it, still moves. Oh, I like those ads loading on my phone, those are great. In the middle of me looking at the website, just loads a new ad. Scrolls my page up and down. Alright, got my onion cut up. Green onions for the end, but. I can do that later. That's for topping it, essentially. That's basically all you gotta cut up. This recipe is really easy. So I'm just gonna mix up the broth, mm -hmm. like the seasoning that you put into the meat okay. when you're cooking it. And I bought these giant packets of Dashi. Dashi, don't, don't buy these unless you're gonna make a lot of food. <laughs> because these are gigantic and you only need a little bit and they're really strong. It smells like fish in here now. Look like granules, see? Little granules. Hold on, hold on. Come back. I'm making a double. Okay. So I need about a cup. So I was reading online, people, the box for this is like confusing, like the proportion of how much it makes, how much you need. It's not per cup. It's like per two and a half cups, which doesn't make any sense in American cooking. So we're gonna make, I can't tell what that is. We're gonna make, that's one teaspoon. I'm gonna use like a little less than one teaspoon I'm gonna use about half a teaspoon per cup of dashi because I need a cup of dashi. Use a little bit more. All stuff, of our measuring cups are worn off. Yeah, we've washed them too many times. The paint wore off. And now I need sake. Gotta pop the bubbly. It's not bubbly. It's wine. It's not. Some of them are. Yeah, this isn't a. Yeah, it smells like wine. Oh, well, yeah, let me get that on the camera. I smell of that. Oh, the smell of it. Oh, it was really. Uh, Focus. That's what we want. Hard focuses. Now I need two tablespoons of this. I don't know what proportion you're supposed. To, recipes normally you put these in like at certain times. I, I like mixing them ahead of time. I think it's easier. Mix all, all your sauce ingredients together, and you can pour them in at once. So this bowl is not special. Just this is whatever. just a decent bowl that we had. That's big. It's a bigger bowl. And now I need mirin, which I bought one that's kind of sweet, and more sweet than other ones, I think. So I'm going to be, maybe not have to put sugar in this. I don't think I need to add sugar. Japanese cooking wine. See how syrupy that is? Because there's a ton of sugar in this. Yeah, it's Japanese cooking wine likes sake, but it has sugar added to it. But this one's like even syrupy, like really syrupy. Yeah, it looks like corn syrup or something. I may have bought the wrong one, but it, it will make it work.
I'll add three. I'll add double what it says. Let me see if there's a... I've never used this brand, this type before. I'm just seeing if there's a conversion for using normal mirin. I don't think I need to add sugar. This is like, this looks like syrup. It smells like alcohol still, so maybe it's okay. This is like taking forever. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. No phone, don't lock. Okay, I'm gonna add half the sugar. So I forgot the sugar. Oh, is it? Oh, crap, I can't see. I'm blind. All right. I'm going to get a different measuring thing for that. Add one tablespoon. That's what it says. Make sure I got that right. Yep. Seems like a lot. Oh, whatever. It'll be good. Okay. And then I need four tablespoons of soy sauce. It'll probably caramelize or something on the meat. This? Like oh, the sugar. sugar, oh yeah, it will. That's part of the part of why it's in there, and it balances out better because this is really salty. I need two more, a little over two more. And I need to add the water for the dashi because I just put stock in here. Uh, the, this is like uh, great. It's like bouillon cubes essentially, but it's a powder. This one's a powder instead of a cube. It's the same thing, but I need to add a cup of water now. But you want hot water? It doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm just going to get some water out of the sink. And I can smell it a There we go. And that's it. Now i got to make it. it. Smells pretty good. Yep. Alright. Now, boo. Let's start this thing up. Turn on the oven about medium-ish. Five or six out of ten. Uh, got a lot of, look how much sake we used. Like barely any. Oh yeah, you want to tell them about the sake? How we probably could have got a cheaper one at the Asian store versus what we did. Yeah, we, that Asian store that we found after we bought all the stuff, we could have got everything cheaper. This I could have got real mirin, like better mirin that was cheaper. I could have got more soy sauce because we're about to run out. I definitely probably could have got sake for a lot less than I paid. This is supposed to be number one in Japan, is what it said. So, I bought it. Whatever that means. Oh, you, yep. bought, you did buy it, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they got me. All right. Stupid fat Americans. I'm going to go ahead and pour my sauce in, because it's getting pretty warm already. This is Americans will buy anything. Let's put number one on it. Ichiban. Isn't that number one? Yeah. And now we're just waiting on it to boil or something? Yeah, when it starts bubbling, I'm going to throw my onions in. And then throw... I can smell it now. I might have put too much dashi. I'm supposed to refer... Oh, if you buy these big packets of dashi, like I did, I just folded it over. They say to refrigerate it after you open it, so it'll stay fresh longer. This thing came with two of these packets, and I barely used any of it. So, keep it in the fridge. I'm going to taste it right now, actually. Oh, ooh, 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 that's good. Definitely tastes like dashi. So if you don't know what dashi tastes like, or if you're afraid it's kind of fishy, it's kind of fishy, but it's more smoky fishy to me, so it's not really strong. So if you don't like dashi as much, you can even you can leave it out, or you can put chicken broth or something else instead if you want to make it easier. Or if you want to try dashi, just don't you know be use a little, don't use a lot your first time. You may not like it. All right, onion time. Like you don't want the caramelized onion taste. You want these to be soft and like cook through. You don't want the, yeah, you don't want that caramelized taste. What's that, like Yoshinoya or Yoshinoya? This is supposed to be like Yoshinoya. So it had onions in it too? Yeah, there's lots of onions in it normally. They're, they cook down and they're like really sweet and crunchy. They're really good. I added extra onion because I like onions a lot. Okay, um, now I just put a lid on this and let it cook for I think about ten. Or okay, or I can I'm do. Rolling. All right, I'm gonna just while I'm wait, you can. I'm gonna cut up some green onions for topping. 
I'm cutting them pretty, pretty poorly right now. My knife is pretty dull. <laughs> you need to sharpen your knife. This cutting board's making well, me. Well, yeah, we are some freaking time. sliding all over the. All right, this is what mine looks like. My lid doesn't really fit, so some of my broth is boiled off, but that's kind of what you want some of it to boil off. I think I had too much water in there. You know, I turned it down to like three or four on my stove, and that's what it looks like. See, they look pretty yellowish, the onions, most of them, and they're cooked down, and that's what you want. Now we're going to add the meat. And make sure. Okay, yeah, just add the meat, and then when the meat's cooked, it's done. So I'm just going to dump this in. Try not to splash it. Oh, there's a little paper. Look at that. It's a present. Okay. Okay. I should have spread it out a little better. Didn't do a too good job of that. Too good of a job. I don't know what kind of cut this meat is. I'm sure it's not ribeye. It looks like bottom round. If you can get ribeye, they suggest that for a lot of the recipes online. I say not to do that because it's expensive usually unless the Asian grocery store near you is cheap. Get that. If it's not, try to find this or something else that's thin sliced beef because unless you like eating like uh, the Monopoly man every day, ribeye is expensive. And see, now we're getting it back to a simmer. All right, ready. Uh, this is uh, what it'll look like when it's done. See how it's basically, there's some slight pink on the edges of maybe a few just tiny pieces, but overall it's done. It's bubbling everywhere. Basically, to, we just cook it till it turns, you know, no longer pink. And then it's, we're ready to eat. So we're going to move over there and uh, we're going to move over an assembler right now. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the bowl. There's the rice. See, it's kind of translucent, shiny. Didn't get it perfect, but see. Just gonna scoop out however much you think you can fit, you can eat. This is a pretty big bowl that I'm using. I'd say that's about. That's a pretty big bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say this is probably about cup, cup and a half cooked rice. Mm. I'd say that's probably good. For now, I can add more later. Take that out. Now we move over to the beef bowl. And topping. I should have brought a different spoon to spoon sauce over. I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah. You want to get one? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll just come back. Grab the wrong. Should have been using this because I can get sauce out with it. The sauce in the bottom is the best part. So you want to take that, pour it all over. This is going to be the prettiest bowl ever. I guess we could make it look better. And then we're going to top it with green onions. You can also, I didn't make one, but I could also top it with a, they call it an onsen egg. It's a soft boiled egg. It's really good and it like mixes down into it. And then a little bit of pickled ginger right here on the side. When you want to get rid of the really sweet, salty taste that helps you out. Okay, you move that that way and this that way. Like this? Yeah. yeah. That's good. Good. Here's a towel if you want that. Yeah, maybe a little bit more sauce on the top. Maybe a little more onions. I really like the onions. Okay. And that's essentially it. Oh, seasoning, right? Oh. Yeah, it's like less than 30 minutes you can make those. The rice is the thing you gotta wait the longest on. So, that's it. Are you gonna eat it? Yeah. It asked me twice. Oh, wait. The light's in. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Does it remind you of Yoshinoya? Oh, yeah. Maybe not as sweet as you know, I cut back on the sugar. Still really good though. Oh man. The meat is the meat is the meat is chewy. It's sheep meat, that's how it is. But man, yeah, zero out of ten. Zero stars. <laughs> You're willing again? 
This is awesome. Oh, we just get rated zero. As you can see, the best way. part, the juice that soaks into the rice. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. And then when you and then when you get a little, get rid of that. Uh, if it gets a little sweet or too meaty, a little pickled ginger, clean out your palate. Bam. And you go back for another. <laughs> okay. All right. You may get a picture of it. Or you're gonna make another bowl. Of this now? Oh, already, oh yeah. I shouldn't have ate it. Huh? Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. I kind of need to take pictures. I can make another one.